Welcome to the V2V Podcast Survivor Series, Season 2. My name is Marcus Parrish, host and creator of the V2V Podcast, along with senior contributor Alexi Lindez and Maddie Clark. Today, Alexi will be talking to Annie Paschen, a former student at the Elan School, the notorious boarding school in Maine that was shut down in 2011 because of their severely controversial practices. The reason we do this podcast, this series, is to inform people not only about the practices that have occurred in the past, but to shine a light on many institutions and therapeutic boarding schools, wilderness camps, conversion therapy schools that are still, in fact, in operation. Our goal, in fact, is to raise enough awareness so places like this also get shut down. I want to thank everybody who's been listening for the past several months. And to also let you know that we now have a Patreon where you can contribute to our channel and to our podcast for as little, little as $1 a month. It, uh, it really is a helpful thing if you can uh, manage to afford to do that. We have three tiers, $1, $3, $5. You will get early releases special episodes, some kind of backroom post-game talk that isn't for the general public. Sometimes it's a little bit more explicit and things that a channel like YouTube wouldn't necessarily allow. So that's what's going on today and welcome to season two of the V2V podcast. And as always, Thanks for watching. Hello, and welcome to another series of the Survivor Series on B2B Podcast. My name is Alexi Lindis, or short. Today, I'm interviewing Annie Paskin, and she is a survivor of Elon School. Hi, Annie. How are you? Hey, how are you doing, Lexi? I'm doing okay, thanks. How are you? Doing pretty good. Okay. So um, first, I'd kind of like to get you to explain to me what TTI is to you and how you define TTI, the troubled teen Uh, industry. um, While I was kind of very disturbing, um, I think it did a lot more damage than it good for anybody. Um, How I got there, um, you know, I was just a basic kid, and I ran away from youth to put – Others, you know, in my situation, because a lot of us were, like, a lot of the same. Um, some of us had other issues, but some of us had, you know, family issues. Kind of like the Breakfast Club, you know, if, if I might add it to that way. Um, we uh, found ourselves in a place called Elon. And Elon was a very unique um, place, I thought, at the time, and find out today that it's not so unique because it's, brainwashing, it uh, tortured for children. Um, there's a surprise. In, it never closes, never, never closed. Um, anything can happen at any time. Um, we had things like general meetings. Um, a general meeting is where a child is put in front of a house, you know, or different houses. So if you have anywhere from 30 to 300 people screaming in your face at one time, and that usually would put you in a boxing ring. And the boxing ring was a uh, circle of children all together. And then they would take um, the biggest guy or the biggest girl from the house and put you in with them. And um, you'd go several rounds until you were defeated. Um, it's, it's happened quite often. Um, they were asked to knock it off, but they never did um, until, like, maybe the late 90s. I think they finally stopped the ring, or maybe the early 2000s. Um, Elon opened in um, 1970, I believe. 
And um, right. the founders, yeah, the founders um, were interesting. Um, one of them was a psychiatrist, okay, so he knew the damage that this was going to cause children. And he even put his own children in this, this, to this wild, dangerous, bizarre place. And then there was Joe Ritchie, and Joe Ritchie was a, um, supposedly a con man stealing people's social security checks. So instead of going to prison, they sent him to Daytop because he said he was a heroin addict. I don't know if he was a heroin addict. I do know that he was an active cocaine no. user in the no, program. No, Daytop, Daytop is a spinoff of Synanon, correct? Correct. That is a, a Synanon school, to my understanding. So what we're talking, what we're talking about is brainwashies entering into a program, becoming hooked onto whatever idea, you know, they're being tortured with, and mm -hmm. then taking it outside and creating their own enterprise. Exactly. Torture. Exactly. Um, so it's kind of it's a rather incestuous sort of industry. Because it seems like a lot of programs have started from X, Victims or, you know, ex students of play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I would have to say okay. that with most of the people. Right. But okay, Elon so was unique in a way because we had adults running around as well. And I'm not sure what they were doing there. <laughs> you know, like a 30 year old with a 15 year old. Um, that's kind of bizarre in its mm -hmm. own way. Um, what? Were they paid? Those thirty-year-olds were they being paid? No, they were. Um, they were actually victims. <laughs> as ridiculous as that sounds, um, Elon took anybody for money. Um, we had people that um, we had one girl that actually killed some students, some young children, drowned them, and put them with other children. Um, when I got there, um, the first night that I got there, I seen a guy that was 30 years old running around in a baby costume and perhaps somebody, you know, that was probably in their 20s. Just like a syringe. Um, this place was very unique, and I knew I was in a very dangerous situation in 1982. So were, were, were these graduates of Elon? Um, they weren't graduates. No, they were residents. Um, to be a graduate, you'd have to graduate their program. Um, usually, the basic person that was there was anywhere from the age of 12 to 18. That was like the basic age, you yeah. know, of most people. And um, the younger, the better, because the younger you were, the more you got tortured. I got there when I was 15 years old. And, um, right. yeah, and when I got there, um, they... They had taken children and put them into a trailer and let them do whatever they wanted to each other for, like, two weeks. This was a very bizarre place. Um, you know, people were knocking on doors. There was a lot of screaming. Um, it's very um, intense and very hard to explain into words of program and how you would feel walking into this. Um, it was rather shocking. Um and they would dress people up. There was a, a mentally retarded child there with a cigarette hat on, which was like a, a big dunce cap, but it was a cigarette hat. And um, he was new on three, so I didn't really see him too often. But I was um, one that would go around because I peeled a lot of people in corners. And, um, you know, I, too, I, I, I had dental yeah, meetings and stuff, me. too. So yeah. to peel somebody yeah, in a corner... Um, that means a personal overseer, and that means you oversee that person, and if they act out, then you will um, be punished for that. Um, like they used to have kids living in the dumpsters, for example, and they would have a PO, and if one of the kids from the dumpsters ran away, then you were put in the dumpster. And, right. and everything okay, I'm saying so is documented, so. So basically, you come into the program and you're probably given a PO, and then you're you work for a certain amount of time, and once you're trusted enough, you can then become a PO, right? Well, well, well a PO is usually someone that's watching someone in the corner, or you know, um, observing somebody, um, like you know, that's stuck in the dumpsters to make sure they don't run away. 
So when you first get in, you get a big sister, you get a big brother. And, um, you know, they basically, you know, if you have to use the bathroom, they have to go to the bathroom with you. And if you need to, you know, do something, they go with you. Um, there is no phone calls. There is no communications with your family. There is no communications with the outside world. You are stuck in the middle of Maine. Right. Yeah. Right. So and can you sort of keep going with how the sort of system works, how you advance, and, and what sort of, you know, can you start off with with the brother and sister? I'm, I'm and, sorry, I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. Sorry. Could you please, could you please explain how the level system works? Um, um and sort of the how, level. how you. Yeah, huh? um, I can, yes, I can, I can explain that. Um, usually okay. when you would come into the program, you are a service worker, which means you are cleaning the bathrooms and the house, you know, um, and the next level is like a ramrod, and that's someone that oversees the worker. And then, um, then you have like a department head, and that's like the middle of kind of like the, the crew. And then you'd have, um, uh, coordinator trainee, and then a full coordinator, you know, um, and then you'd have a senior coordinator. Um, most people, most houses do not have a senior coordinator when I was there. Um, that's someone that's like the mayor of the house. Um, the yeah. um, people, the kids kind of ran the house because the staff was um, usually busy. Um, if they weren't GMing somebody, giving someone a GM or giving someone a haircut, um, they pretty much did what they wanted to. Um, and then there was another, um, like, part of the um, system to where there was, like, the police force. And the police force, you would start out as an expediter, an expediter would go around taking head counts and would um, make sure everybody was there. Or if you left, like if you were fortunate enough to go get a root canal, as ridiculous as that sounds, um, <clears throat> you look forward to that, okay? Um, you would be written out that you were gone, so they would keep track of you. Then there was a single expediter, and, and, and his job is to make sure the expediters are doing his job, so he's kind of like... Um, the sergeant, and then there's, like, the chief expediter, and he's kind of like the chief of police, and you'd go to him, and he would tell on people, like, so-and-so swore on the floor, or but you'd have to book people, you, you know. They looked at this. They they would take an inventory, and if you weren't doing what they wanted you to do, um, then he would be severely punished. Then there was a coordinator right. of that, and that was, like, the mayor of, you know, of the whole police chief, um, you know, enforcement people, um, the expediters, you know. So um, it was really unique and very uh, bizarre. <clears throat> it was very much um, um, very confusing. And, it's, it, and, and someone put it in his words, and, and, I, and I like the way that she put this, um, is that it was like kind of like Lord of the Flies. Yeah. It was every man for themselves. They, the more you told, the more the more you'd confront people, um, the quicker you'd kind of graduate, but then they would play mind games with you, and of course, shot you down or do something to you, too. And then there was a phase in the program to, it's called reentry, and you're reentry into society. Now, by this time, you usually um, are so brainwashed or you're so traumatized that you have this expression on your face, like, you know, um, very blank very um, yeah. disconnected um, because you've, you've already been through so much at this point. Um, yeah. You've been through boxing rings and sitting in corners and dressed like a baby or dressed like a prostitute. It was um, a very, very bizarre place. And um, I studied the straight program, but I, I, I have no experience in that, so I don't feel comfortable like, talking about it right now. Um, yeah. But that was also like a very abusive Mind controlling um, experience, and that's what it was. It was about yeah. control. And um, if somebody ran away, um, you know, it's bad enough that you got one child running around the woods, but then they would send more children out to look for that child, which is bizarre yeah. because that's endangerment to children running around the woods of Maine. You know, um, there's wild yeah. animals and there's people that are with guns. You know, <laughs> people with yeah. property. You know, so 
and, and, and it was known that a few people got shot when they ran away. But they would always catch you. That was that was their example. You, you'd be there was no sense in running away. I never saw any sense in it because I knew they'd catch me. So did did Joe kind of set up shop in that community and kind of make himself a good name in that particular um, area of Maine? Yes, he did. Um, not everybody liked Joe. But he was a um a figure in society. Um, I came from a um a, like my grandfather was um the chief of police and he had a lot of experience with children and um because he's he's taking a lot of psychology, he was an intelligent man. And the first night that I came to Elon, we were met by Doctor Davidson and his son, um, who I, I really don't want to mention his name because I know this guy has a lot of like problems now, um, but his son looked pretty much like he was disconnected, and so they used their own children to make the place look better, like, look, I got my kids here, and they kind of sabotaged sure. their life, um, and they had, yeah. see, Joe Ritchie wasn't able to pull that off because um, they needed someone to fool my grandfather, for example, and I'm just like one person out of many, I'm sure there was a lot of other intelligent people there too, but... Uh, most, like, you know, if, if, if you were educated, you were going to meet the Dr. Davidson firsthand because he was a psychiatrist and he knew exactly how to manipulate and what to say to people, parents, to reassure them that this was a good place. Okay. So. Okay. Um, I have a couple of, like, questions because... Sure. Um... <sighs> I don't. I don't really want to pry too hard into this, but did you know the the man who was accused of killing someone, um, and who then sentenced? Um, that individual I did not know personally. Um, um, it's ironic. You, I, I know who you're talking about. Um, I was watching yeah. the ID station, and that's when I heard the word Elon. Um, that's what triggered my memory because it told to me that. When someone has complex PTSD, and you don't, you know, you live your whole life and don't even know that you have it, um, and you're misdiagnosed with other things that they thought I was bipolar until they, you know, discovered that I was in this place. Um, no, it, it's, it, um, that's what really woke me up. And, um, I didn't know him personally, but I'm, I'm, I'm told different things, like he didn't do it, that Elon beat him so badly in the rain. And then I've had people tell me that yes, he did it. Um, so it's 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 for me to say that he did or he didn't do it. Um, really is not like something I can can yeah, specify sure. on because I, mean, I didn't I know him. I mean, I don't want to give anybody false information. You know, I want to be as real as I can. I think, I think I think the main point is is that even even if he did or didn't. Let's just say he did, and mm -hmm. then he was sent to Elon to be with you guys in a place where there's very little supervision, you know? Yeah, that was a very and dangerous then, situation, yeah. That, that could have been also, if he did. You know, he, he was made to walk around with a sign saying, I am a murderer, I killed yeah. this person, you mm -hmm. know? I mean, the levels of just, you know, fucked upness of, of our system alone, that this person, you know, wasn't put on trial prior to this or wasn't, you know, somehow separated prior to this from you guys at least anyway, or the general public in some way, you know, I, I and then being pushed in a situation where, you know, false confessions in these places, in TTI, False yeah. confessions, are, they fly out of your mouth like like nothing else. Yeah, you know, exactly. You, you would, you, yeah, you would be you're... admitting to nine eleven if you had to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. like if when when it comes to the point where you are being pushed mm -hmm. and you are you are in a situation where you're being tortured, you are going to say whatever the fuck you need to say to get out. Exactly, you know, and you would. Smalls, I chopped Tupac, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Just 
stop doing this to me, please. I'll do whatever you want. Yeah, you know? and, and, and in all fairness to um to that individual, um, I was told by a lot more people than a lot of people that said that he did do it. Uh, I was told that he didn't do it, that it was beaten out of him, and that it, he was a, a bloody mess. I mean, he could hardly walk after that boxing incident. So, I mean, I kind of, kind of, knowing Elon, um, I would have to gear that maybe he, maybe was innocent, but at the same time, I, I don't want to specify on something that I really don't yeah. know much about. Sure. You know, I can tell you. Go ahead. All right. I also want to ask about the young man who died in the ring. And I mean, um, if you don't want to talk about that, that's fine too. No, I that's, that's fine. Um, you know, he's just the, um, he was a state kid and his dad was in prison and his mom was in a coma because his dad tried to whack off his mother. And, you know, I would imagine because we were not allowed to talk, you know, like, you know, um, discuss family life or anything yeah. like that or issues. Um, but, um, I would imagine his life wasn't very well, um, if his dad tried to kill his mother and, um, mm. his mother, um, I guess I've heard, I'm not sure, again, I don't, I don't know these people. I know Phil, but, um, um, I didn't know his mother, but she was supposedly a party person and I don't really know the whole story of that because that was like an yeah. alarm secret, but, um, Bill Williams, was known, and I have been asked on three different occasions by the uh, state of Maine, by their investigators, um, what happened that night. And just like um psychiatrist had told me that I had to go get professional help because this was one of my first memories. And I would go into, like, a trance, um, and I would go on autopilot because I would be driving my car, for example, but I would be back in time. And um, Bill Williams was put in the boxing ring for supposedly taking a headache when he had headaches prior to this. So, and he was seeing a doctor. So, when they put him in a boxing ring, you know, it's bad enough and it's illegal, you know, it's like a cock fight or a dog fight. Yeah. It's illegal yeah. to put somebody in a boxing ring and they were told to knock it off. But they put this particular kid into a boxing ring and... I don't know what they expected that was going to happen to him because they knew he had brain injuries already. So to punch him in the head um, right. repeatedly would um, trigger any brain problems he had. And um, that's a very um, – that was probably the worst day of my life, you know, and I've had some pretty bad days in my life. But um, I would sure. honestly say that beats um, anything because um, – I blocked it out. I um, did not want to comprehend it. I couldn't comprehend it. I lived all these years without remembering it. Um, my sure. cat died in my arms, and and I didn't comprehend that somebody else died in front of me. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of bizarre how your when your mind is ready to let go, or when you're at peace, you know these numbers are going to trigger back, and that's really what sure. I what I what I want to write about is complex PTSD and how it works. You know, and, yeah. and what it, and how it can affect somebody's life. Um, because I, you know, um, you know, I've talked to, um, uh, different investigators about this and, um, they got the same answers. You know, it's been consistent, but I remember a little more all the time, um, about that night. Um, it's like a yeah. trigger that will re- remind me of who else was in the boxing ring with them. And, um, right. they would make people beat on people and and um and that's that's kind of um really uh if you think about it psycho you're making somebody cause violence and harm on somebody else you yeah, know it's, it's one of the most sadistic stories i've heard from tti the ring it is by far like because i can see how that could happen mm-hmm. i could see like i can see how in competition you know group like and, and this is just from my own experience, which is, you know, not anything to do with yours. But I can mm-hmm. see, I can see how that can all turn and I can see how mob mentality takes over in that situation and it just becomes this mess and someone ends up dead. Yeah. You know, I can see that. Yeah. I can see. Um, yeah. 
and 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 then I've heard that there's uh there was other deaths in this place, but there was other deaths in other institutions too, um, from the yeah. neglect and covered up. Because um, what happened is Phil laid on that floor for a good hour before they got him some help, and um, yeah. so yeah, um, I just stood there frozen. I couldn't move. Um, and other kids were like, because I screamed to get him help. And I, and the thing that yeah. really bothers me is I tried to get him some help and I was told to sit the hell down. And, um, and the guy, the staff member, an adult, continued to joke around and laugh and, um, told me just to, he would take care of it when he could. And, uh, so, um, yeah, that was a very hard, um, thing so, to say and see. So can I ask you, can I just ask you, so, Okay, so they eventually get him help. So nine one one call comes, right, or someone comes? Um, well, there was um, after um, after Phil went into convulsions, um, he was put into a corner, and I was with Bo. Um, and mm. I think that makes me tired. No, Phil was also my friend, and uh, I, you know, sorry, what? sorry, yeah. What? And I said Phil was also my friend, you know. Uh, they were yeah. called contracts, you know, that's another word for, you know, a will be line. But um, I, I had, like, four friends. In fact, I goofed around with everybody, you know. Um, so I was just kind of a goofing kind of kid. And there was other good kids in there, too. You know, all we, all we wanted to do was be kids. But, um, you know, you'd have to tighten up when, when the adults were around. You'd have to, like, tighten up when other children were around because you didn't know who was going to who was gonna ratch out or who wasn't going to ratch out. Yeah. But to get back to that night with Phil, um, um, he um, started to turn blue and purple, and I screamed for help. And um, all the children came running in, and the staff member that was left behind, because there was two at the, that put him in the ring. <clears throat> and the one came in, and then um, he was, like, on the floor for a little while. Um, I'm going to say a good hour. You know, it, it might have been longer. It might have been shorter. But when you're in that state of mind, um, it's very hard to comprehend. I couldn't comprehend it, and I think that's yeah. why it froze. And I think a, a lot of the other children, as well, were freaked out, <laughs> just as freaked. Yeah. And um, then they had two more staff members come in, and then they finally had um, two ambulance people come and just put them on a stretcher and take them out. And um, I looked up, you know, things like brain injuries and stuff like that. So he was probably in a lot of pain. Um, when this was going on and before, because I'm sure that um, anybody having this kind of problem with their head, um, you get pain behind your ears and you get pain behind your eyes, and it was yeah. pretty, um, it, it, it wasn't anything unusual. They should have taken him to the hospital, if you ask me. I mean, anybody who needs medical attention should be taken to the hospital. So, And that's not what they did. They didn't care. And he was a state kid, so... Um, they didn't have to answer to anybody. See, that kind of makes me more suspicious if this wasn't um, not. I, I, I want to say premeditated, but I think it was just to be mean and that's Elon and that they didn't give a shit. You know, sure, kind of thing. Sure. I'm I'm oh. I'm so sorry that happened. Like I. It's, yeah. Well. Like he's I, at peace. You know. And, um, yeah, I know, I know, I know. And, but I mean, yeah. like, I'm sorry for all of you that witnessed it. I can't imagine that any of you walked out of that without tremendous trauma. I mean, I'm um, sure some stuffed it up, but I, I, yeah, I think it caused um, more trauma in my life and me not recognizing it. Um, my grandfather, if I would have told him when I came out. Um, he was just a like newly retired chief of police, and he had a lot of people that would have backed him up on that, maybe you know. But I can't say for sure because you know, um, Sir Richie's a good scam artist, and so is Dr. Davidson. But um, I just have that guilt feeling that I didn't remember him. So, and they did come back to ask about Phil. Um, there was two women and a man, and when they asked that, we were told by Elon like three days later. If you say anything, they'll be sorry. So, um, you know, they asked me, and I kind of just went comatose out the window, and, and a few other children did too, I would imagine, you know. Um, 
we didn't say anything, and we and, and so it was not talked about after that. So, yeah, that yeah, that bad situation there. How yeah. how long had you been in the program when that happened? Um, I was there for um about eleven months at this time. Um, I got to Elon um on January twenty first um in nineteen eighty two. And this happened on December 26, 1982. And the kid okay. just turned 15. I think it was like, we don't, we didn't, we didn't have birthdays or anything, so we don't really know, but I know this from looking at his, um, newspaper article. Um, I think he was born around October 3rd or something. October 2nd was his birthday. So he was just newly 15 when that happened. And, okay. uh, so, um, yeah, I do. I do have one more name to bring up. Uh, okay. Uh, hold on a second. I'm just looking for it. Sorry. Um, That's okay. Take your time. William Diamond. Who's that? Um, Bill Diamond. Um, I. Don't know him personally, but he is the senator or some kind of authority figure of Maine. Um, he was a good friend of Joe Ritchie's, and he is pretty corrupt. Ah, so that's yes. how this all went down. Yes. So that's, you know, uh, Joe's running. Um, I, I had to find this humorous because... You know, my my mind would not go back and think about Elon and the harm that it did, but my grandparents were talking about Joe Ritchie when I was like maybe 20 years old. So now we're talking about 86, and they told me that he was running for mayor, or um, I think it was Senate or something like that, the governor. I think it was governor, and I just kind of like what? <laughs> they really, um, you know, Joe Ritchie had that charming personality when he wasn't coked up, you know. Um, you know, the worst thing you can do, the one thing, you know, I really want to make clear to people, if you have a child in any kind of treatment program or any kind of school, don't give them a phone call. Just show up there. Just just go there and see what you find. You, might, you may be shocked, you know. Yeah, um, and I mean, I'll, I'll even preface it that I'll say, Ask directly to see where the kids are going who are on the lower levels and what they yeah. are doing. Mm -hmm. Because because these programs have a habit of shoving aside to one side of the campus what they don't want visitors and parents to see. Exactly. That's exactly. You just described Elon um, to the T. Um, the hookers that were dressed like hookers, their clothes, were either, they, either they would move the girls or they would take off the clothes and make them look normal. And the signs would come off. And, and people were in the corner. They'd get moved around. That, that, so Elon's not the only one that would do that. See, that's what I really want to make clear, you know, to, to people now. I don't care if it's a, if it's a camp or if it's um, some kind of retreat or if it's a boarding school or a military school or a treatment center. You really any any place that tells you you can't talk to your kids, okay, or they can't call you, that may yeah. be a red flag for something that's definitely going on. You know, and like any place, any place that you go to, and you're told that you can't see the entire campus that your child is in, and, yeah, and you need to be able to see the whole fucking thing. And I'm sorry, yeah. but sorry to use language, but oh yeah, no, it's I okay. Mean, I I I am totally totally convinced that these places are clever enough to sweep aside and to sort of make things look a certain way. I certainly yeah. remember the days when parents would come visit at Heritage, and I remember how things would change. You know, all yeah. of a sudden we've got all this food out, and all of a sudden we've got, you know, all of the kids who are on the lower levels are all of a sudden down in ISU. And they're not, you know, they're not being seen by anyone on campus. Exactly. You know? I mean, it's, it's, and the it's screaming stops. Like in Elon, the, the screaming would stop. The haircuts would go off, you know, because that's when you're knocking at the door and they have three people screaming at you. 
and the knock right here, yeah. all those would shut up. So nobody heard me yelling. So you're exactly right. I have to agree with that 100%. These are things that you just want to go there and, and, and catch them in the ass. Seriously. Yeah. That's, you know, um, this man made a documentary, and um, um, I had a couple of people from California streaming this, okay? Um, they never yeah. knew places like this existed, and they were pretty appalled, I must say, you know? And I yeah, had that, people... That documentary, that documentary is called The Last Stop, and I recommend everyone yes. go see The Last Stop. Yes, I wasn't sure if we could bring that up, if, if, if that could be sad, you know, so I wasn't sure. Yes, the last well, stop. I, I don't know I don't know if I'm allowed to, but I would certainly like the link to it in this video because I think it gives a pretty decent idea, like in the trailer. Yeah, it's kind of yeah, teaching a pretty easy going guy. Um and I don't think you'd have a problem with you saying that or with me saying that. In fact, um, okay. I think that's on its way to Australia right now. I'm not really sure but I heard from uh, another survivor, and we want, yeah. you know, there's people writing books, and there's people making movies, and, and we want people, you know, the more that, the more noise that we make, the more books we write, or the more we talk about it, or, or let other people know that have young, you know, that have younger kids, that might be in your boarding school, um, the more that we talk about it, the more awareness that we can bring, and that's what I feel that we can do, you know what I'm saying, we, we can't stop them. You know, but if we can make people aware of them, eventually kids like Elon stop slows down because people stop sending their children there. So if people stop sending yep. their children, then they have to close down shop because there's no money coming in. Right. You know, exactly. Which is good. Which is what we want to do. I think, I think, and that's really where I kind of wanted to end this conversation or at least get mm-hmm. to was that, that I think that these places operate because they're allowed to operate in the dark. Yeah. And I think that, and I think that that's a big thing is to shine a light on these places, Mm -hmm. to show that they're absolutely bullshit, and to show that there's child abuse going on. And, and, and And that's, yeah. And, and just to make it clear, because I know a lot of people from the straight program, um, you have the president of the United States, um, George Bush at the time, telling you to send your ch- children to straight, people are going to listen to the President of the United States, just per se, you know. And then they got yeah. Lady Diane involved. But see, she doesn't, yeah. you know, it was so hard to imagine this woman abusing somebody. She didn't. They just made it look good. Like, they cleaned it up for, like, the parents, like they did for Lady Diane. So she was only there briefly. But they used that um, kind of for the glam light. Of, look, Lady Diana was there, and George Bush is telling you to send your kids there, and, you know, we got this place in Maine, and you got, like, manipulated little um, psychiatrists that are making money. Because if you have, if, you, if your kid is in an institution and they want to send them away, that psychiatrist is getting a kickback. It's just like medication. They're getting a kickback yeah. from the medication company. So it's the same thing. Yeah. Um, this Marvin Schwartz, and I don't mind saying his name, he was a bizarre, crazy doctor, and he's still alive, and he's still seeing children the to treatment programs, you know, which is shocking because he's 92 years old. But that's how I got to Elon, and that's how a lot of other children got to Elon because he was good friends with Dr. Davidson. So it's by, you know, these doctors going to school, and then they say, you know, hey, I got this place, you know, and you send me some kids. You know, and we're, we, we become um, – Marketing, we, you know, it's like sex, it's kind of like a sex trafficking kind of thing, you know, we're, we're, no, we're it is. for it's, sale. Yes. Yeah, no, and, I, it's the largest trial, legal trial trafficking ring to ever yeah. exist. This is a multi-billion okay. dollar industry, mm-hmm. you know, and, and as far as that Diana, Princess Diana thing with George Bush and all of them, that really exploded the troubled teen industry that made it a landmark and it made, yeah. you know, all of a sudden the enemy was in our home and the enemy was inside of our kids and we had to straighten them out to get that out. And, yeah. you know, and for that particular meetup where Diana met with those straight kids. And I know this because I've talked to kids who were there. Oh, okay. So, okay, were, good. 
they were all top level straight. And they were all brought in while the lower levels were left in the basement. They were all brought in on buses, and they were all specifically told, you behave this way or you will be marathoned for three weeks. You know? And I mean, marathon, you know, marathoning was where you would be kept awake and forced to do push-ups and beaten until you fucking submitted and Um, cried. Yes, I've heard some real horror stories about that, uh, that straights program. I'm very good friends with a lot of people and what they had yeah. to endure. You know, there is no, you know, one thing I, I don't agree with is that, you know, some people want to say this place is worse than that place. Is, you know, I think they're all bad. No. So I'm not in for no, a competition no, not, here. Because, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, you know, it's not a competition, but also like, like the important thing to remember is one place led to the other place and the other place led to the other place. And without the yeah. place before, there wouldn't be the ideas and the, the the type of structure and architecture to the program. You know, this is how it started, and, and you can see the path. You okay. can kind of see how one thing led to another, you know. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and how, you know, one program sort of recognized, or one businessman or con man sort of recognized that there was a market through some other place. Exactly. And that's, yeah. Yeah, and that's what it, happened. You know, we've had boys and there's a place I gotta make this very clear. Um, you know this person as well as I do, it's my introduction to you. And um he was telling me about a place that's in Missouri right now, um, where it's a girls um, you know, place. And girls are being raped right now. Um, I'm not sure of the name of the place. I forgot because he told me and I wrote it down. But, I, you know, I have so many notes on, on the teen industry right now and, and, and writing and stuff. So I can't really bring that name up right now. But I, I have to bring awareness. Huh? Hezbollah House? Hezbollah um, House? I'm not really Definitely. sure. Um, you know, and, and another thing is I, I, I know a lot of these cults, have religion attached to them, like there's pastors and there's, you know what I'm saying, and the pastor is um, actually sleeping with these young girls, and they're forced to do this, yeah. and that's just yeah. as bad as the slavery sex ring, you know, so we want to make it perfectly clear that this is happening as well. It's very important for people to know your child right now, if you're a, a parent, a social worker, a judge, you know, a psychiatrist, you really got to be aware of these places. Um, in fact, the psychiatrist that I have now, he walked in, and, and this is when I first met him, and he said, so you were in Iran? And I said, oh, you know of it. And he said, no, I just know about the cult. You know, he didn't know about particular ones. He just knew that there was. Yeah. And he said, all these people belong in prison, and, you know, um, what these children have gone through is unbearable. And a lot of people, and I think he you knows this, have committed suicide. So when people are having a drug overdose, yeah. it's always a question of my mind. Is it a suicide? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And and it's ruining people's lives because of their people's children and, you know, or, you know, that somebody's brother or somebody's mother or somebody, you know what I'm saying? Um, I, I, I can at least think of 15 people that have committed suicide since I've been on Facebook, which is my existence on Facebook. Never had curiosity in technology until I remembered you on. Never. Yeah, since uh, since 2011, and I found all the other survivors. Uh, mm-hmm. I think I think I can count at least 107 people that I know who have committed suicide who have gotten wow. out of the program. Yeah. This is this yeah. is an epidemic. It's yeah. An epidemic. And yeah. these places are generally run by car salesmen at best, con men, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. who who are making a fortune. I mean, I know I know my uh, partner, Marcus, my podcast partner, Marcus, he, uh, he was investigating the place I went to, and he found out that the owner every year for the last three years has been taking a million dollars out of it. Wow. You know, mm. yeah. I mean, like, you know, it's gotten to the point where it's so big now and it makes so much money. He can just Uh walk up to it like a bank and take a million out. Yeah. You know? 
And, and yeah, I, mean, I can. That's that's blood money. That's blood yeah. money that you're, you know, and kids' tears, and kids' pain, and adults with trauma in this country because of what you've done. This is a non-scientific, exactly. a non-scientific pseudoscience bullshit way of dealing with parenting. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I <laughs> I don't know what was going on in your home at the time when you went to Elon, but I imagine um, it wasn't, you know, great. Well, my, my, my home life was very abusive, okay? And um, yes. I ran away from home because my mom sure. and her boyfriend and my older brother, um, who was high on cocaine and steroids, um, was out of their yes. mind. And um, so I would run away, and yes, I did smoke some pot, but um, that's not um, putting someone like that into a lawn situation or any kind of situation is not going to help them. It's it's going to do more damage. Um, and you, there was I some mean, generally. Th- go ahead. Gener- sorry, generally, you know, I don't want to interrupt you, but generally, when you're running away, when a teen is running away. There is a very damn good reason a teen is running away. Mm-hmm. You know, the yeah, outside right. is mm-hmm. more com- the, the outside is more comfortable than the inside. So, yes. you know, so what probably needed to, to happen is is for some therapy to be done in your home, and for some you know some interventions to be done by professionals, and for you to have your community support you, which you know that doesn't exist. You know, right now. No, no, it doesn't exist. Yeah. And, but, but, you know, fundamentally, all teenagers pretty much eventually smoke pot. And if they don't, they'll do it in college. Whoops. Exactly. You know? You know? And, it, it, and, and get over it. <laughs> and, 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 yeah, exactly. Look to yourself as, as why your teen is you know, running away and trying to get away from me. I mean, because I'm a runaway, too. You know, I was a okay. runaway. Okay. Okay. That's, that's why I got sent away as well. So, okay, you know, so, I mean, I yeah, totally and understand. And that's, and see, that's, that was a lot of kids that I knew from Elon, and I'm told that there were yeah. some really damaged kids there. And, um, like, I'm just going to throw this one out there. There was, like, that girl, like I said, she was drawing children, so you put her in with other children. There was a few children that were, like, violent, um, like that stabbed somebody, for example. Um, yeah. And they went to Elan, so now you're putting um, them with a bunch of other kids. Well, this could happen, and it did happen in there. I mean, some crazy, bizarre things that they happen in these institutions or these programs, you know. So um, it, it, it wasn't a – the first night I was there, I knew I was not in safe. I was really in a, a dangerous situation. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I think yeah. that went through a lot of people's minds. I'm sure I'm not alone when I, when I speak about that, you know. Um, that your future, like, if you kind of have this this feeling of despair. Like, you're never going to get out, you know. And then they beat you down. So then you walk through life, and I'm not saying um, for everybody, but for me, I walked through life thinking that I was nothing, you know. And, yeah. um because that's what they did. They never built you back up. They didn't bring you back up. You know, they yeah. pushed you down and made you feel like um, dressing people like prostitutes. You know, there were some women that actually had some serious issues from this and actually grew up to be a prostitute. And that was such a dangerous lifestyle. But they got it from Elon, pretty much. You know what I'm saying? I'm just using this as an example. There was people that, you know, might have been there for stealing stuff, but do you really think a place like this is going to really help them and, and, and make them change? No, I think it's going to make them worse. There's been um, people that have actually got out of these places and have gone to prison, and I'm really amazed that I haven't met a serial killer. From and I'm, I'm, like, I'm just shocked that, like, Joe Ritchie or, you know, nobody came after these people, you know, and I'm using him yeah. as an example because that's who I know, you know what I'm saying? Um so, because you would think that one would be so angry, but I think they planned on it that we would be so um, completely traumatized that that we would not even. Joe Ritchie to tell us no one's gonna we're gonna believe you, and, and we believe that, you know, because it's not so crazy. When I first started to remember these things, I thought I was losing my mind. 
So if it wasn't for, like, the last stop and um, this other guy talking about Elon and his experience there, um, I, I don't think I would have made it to, to counseling. I think I probably mm-hmm. would have, because I really thought I was losing my mind. Especially yeah, with, um, you know, I know, I know, yeah, you too, like, I, yeah. because, yeah, like, you, you get so out, mm-hmm. well, you get out, and also, you're kind of, you, you get a, oh, what's the word where, uh, you're, it's like medical, like, uh, denial of abuse or something, it's like, uh, I can't remember the word for it, but you, you get this a lot, and you're, you're, you know, like, everyone around you is telling you that what happened to you didn't happen to you, and, and, or, exactly. you, should just get over it. or you should just get over it, you should just get over and, it. You know, that's and, the worst thing to, to tell somebody, too. You know, you know, after, after, particularly from TTI, because all mm-hmm. of those kind of, like, I mean, I, 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 I would imagine you, at, at least, because I can, I can tell you're, you're at least sensitive enough to, to understand what was going on, but, you know, when I got out, I knew, you know, I, I'm not an idiot. I know that what I've just been through was horrific abuse. And what I yeah. just saw, what I just saw done to other kids for the last four years was some of the worst, most horrific decision-making <clears throat> I've mm-hmm. ever fucking seen by anyone in my life. And exactly. And this will probably never be okay from that. <laughs> and, and, you know, for, for me to like think that, you know, for me to get out and then have no one, absolutely no one believe me or want to listen to me about it and just tell me to get over it, that, that re-traumatized me so much. Mm-hmm. It's so re-traumatizing, you know. And then yeah. when, when we do finally seek out help, I mean, you know, it took me until I was 28 to, to like, start talking about it all and, like, to actually, you know, go to somewhere where, where people were, were talking about things and, like, okay, well, I can talk about this here, you know, and, yeah. and okay, I'm going to start mm-hmm. talking about this. You know, that, that took a very long time for me. And it, it took me also having all of you guys to, to bounce off of, to understand that this, this wasn't, that, you know, I'm not crazy. Exactly. We're not me. crazy. No. I'm sorry that I'm ranting and I'm sorry that I'm going. No, no, that's here. okay. No. Um, no, no, I, I agree with you. Um, that's why I came and six other survivors, um, I I knew that they would believe me, and I knew that um, when I came to at 49 years old, um, you know, I found out that, you know, I started hearing about other programs, and I started to um, form relationships with those people because my family members were telling me, oh, just get over it. My mom was already dead by the time that I remembered the place. And then um, for my inheritance, um, she left me these letters, that were never open, and I just kind of, like, threw them aside because I guess, you know, they didn't mean anything to me until I started to remember, and then I started to read them. And then I I have a good sense of what I was thinking back then, and I was trying to tip my mom off that this was a very dangerous situation and what they were doing. Um, Yeah. You know, I wish I wouldn't have wrote about Phil, but I think when that happened with Phil Williams, for example... I think my brain just kind of shut off and went, and went into, like, a survivor mode. In fact, yeah, um, yeah actually talking to people that have credentials. You know, I would tell you a lot of people that did not know this, this, these places existed were appalled that they did exist. You know, it's almost unbelievable. Mm-hmm. And, and that was the thing is seeking counseling with nobody that had any education on the in industry. Um, it looked at me like I was crazy and I'd have to pull out my phone and show them like the last stop or show them for the child's own good so they they knew what I was talking about. Um, and yeah. it's funny because the child of darkness, I was actually there. I was in the reentry stage when that was being filmed. So um, I knew the kid in the bunny suit. I knew the kids in the dumpster. I knew the people that they showed me on five. Um, I knew the staff members that they showed. Um, it was very weird to see them people again and, and remember who they were. And we were sleep, like, like in most of these places, we were sleep deprived. 
You know, they'd wake us up yep. for general meetings, and we'd have to stay up all night and watch other kids sleep to make sure they didn't run away. Um, you know, I would have to say that it was very um, bizarre to have kids living in the dumpsters in the state of Maine um, at nighttime, for for example, you know. That's just very dangerous in, in sending children off. Um, so I don't know what the other institutions were like at nighttime. Um, I know the streets, they went to other people's houses. Um, and, and if they were good, they could go to school. If you weren't good, you weren't going to go to school. And school, yeah. um, I can personally say this from Milan, they said that I took um, like chemistry. I, I've never taken chemistry in my life, you know. So when I came out and I went to school for my last year, um, I got in September, they had to set the record straight and they had to fix these documents. So it took me a month to be able to go back to a regular school because they were too fix, right. you know, busy covering their tracks again. Here we go with covering their tracks. You know, so, yeah. um, these yeah. places are very deceiving, and that's what people really have to understand. Um, I've never taken geometry, and I've never taken chemistry or any of these classes, you know. And, yeah. and uh, I think we're going to be too traumatized to learn anything anyway, to, to be quite honest with you. Yeah, I yeah. agree. No, I agree. I, I, don't, I don't think it. I think at a certain point I lost the ability to be able to be educated. I was just trying to survive something that was just yeah. so harassing. Yes, I think and that was. Reading, you know, because you're kind of dying every day. You know, and yeah. a little piece of you is dying every day, and you're kind of losing, you're losing that sense of who you were and who you are, and everything mm-hmm. you you thought you thought before. You know, everything you believe. Yeah. And, you know, and, and exactly, and um, you know, um, I seen for me personally, I I didn't think I was ever going to get out of this damn place. You know, I, yeah. I really didn't see any yeah. light at the end of the tunnel. And I think other people sure. thought that way. And I was there for 20 months. And there was, for for Elon example, and for the Straits program and, and other people, I've heard that they were there for like three, four years sometimes, you know, um, which is yeah. a, a, a hell of a lot. Because our teenage years, you know, um, are really crucial for a person's personality of who they're going to develop into as an adult. And I think that's why so many people are broken. I came out, I had, I I drank a lot of alcohol and I did a lot of LSD and things that I would normally not do Um, because before Elon, people tried to give me alcohol and I was like, no, or people tried to give me a lot of coke and I was like, no, I don't want to do that. And I think afterwards with anything that's going to go now, because I think we're just trying to bear the pain and cover it up. And I was told that when I was in a blackout drum, um, and this is somebody that just told me this the other day. Um, would, would tell me, my God, Ian, you would talk about Phil. You, you talked about general meetings. You talked about them cutting off your ear and holding you down on the floor. And we didn't believe you when you talked about people being dressed up. And we just thought you were yeah. in a drunken blackout. And, and really, I think what it came out to is that when I was totally bombed, um, the feelings came out. But when I was sober and you know, I would go back into not thinking about it to protect my own sanity, for example, you know, and that's just my experience, you know, and I think, I don't think I'm alone yeah. with that. You know, I think a lot of people did a lot of drugs when they got out. In fact, I've talked to quite a, to a few of them. And, and, you know, and things that happened to us probably wouldn't have happened if we weren't in a situation like this. You know, some people Absolutely. did go to jail. Some people did have... um I noticed with a lot of survivors, and I'm one of them, um, that we've had broken relationships, you know, because with complex yeah. PTSD, you know, um, you allow yourself to be abused or you're thinking that you deserve that. Um, and, and I was yeah. in a very abusive relationship, and I talked to other women, for example, and they were in the same situation that I was in. So yeah. um, I think that if we were never in these places, we wouldn't have a, a, a picked out some of the situations that we put ourselves into, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, you know, I want to say that, you know, I believe that when I was 14 and I first went into program, my brain was in development and I believe it got stunted at 14 due to trauma. And I don't think it was able to grow from there. 
And I don't um, think I was able to develop normally. You know, yeah. they, 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 you know what? It's like, um, someone that starts to drink, they stop growing, you know, for, um, using yep. for an example. Because pretty much, yep. um, I have talked to a lot of professional people that actually have credentials and I mean advocates from police departments, I mean, you know, counselors and psychiatrists and anybody that would really talk to me and, and seeking professional help, they all agree on the same thing, you know, that, that that really did affect the way that we were, you know, and played a way. And um, I have one advocate from the Displains Police Department, and she told me that anybody that was in one of these places, she couldn't even finish watching, like, the last stop. Um, or not the last stop, I'm sorry, it was the child's own good. She couldn't even finish watching yeah. that. And this is a, a person that's an advocate that deals with abused children. And um, yeah. I brought it to her attention because my daughter was seeing her for her abuse of father for, you know, first day. You know, that's how I was associated with this woman. So she took an interest, and I met with her four different times on this subject because then she started looking into other teen industries. And and, 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 yeah. and I'm glad that I did because then she learned, don't trust this place, don't trust this place, and be careful we have send children, you know. Because I, I think it's important yeah. for people like that to be aware because – they're the ones that are kind of deceived, too, because they don't know they sugarcoat these places and make them look all pretty and, sure. you know, and, and incredible. And, and they really don't know where they're sending children to. So I think that's important to talk to people um, in that position as well, which is why I brought it up to her, you know. Yeah, so. good for you. I, I think yeah. it's important to talk to as many professionals as possible in the situations that, you know, kids might be sent to, you know, sent away, you know, I exactly. think that that's the key area where, you know, we, we need to target the most, you know, um, exactly. anyway. And I just want to um, point out to you real quickly though, when a child is telling somebody something, they should really take that child seriously because they might be telling the truth and say, you know, um, it, you know, as, as crazy as it sounds, um, a child's imagination can't be that wild where you're talking about boxing rings or, you know, like, and, 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 you know, like no. the the things that you have experienced. You know, you couldn't describe that. Um, I don't even think Stephen King could make up this stuff. <laughs> just no, the same. And, 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 programs, and programs use the term <laughs> manipulating. You know, your yeah. child's going to manipulate you and talk against programming. And, and these are... These are tactics of how cults work and how they keep secrets and how abuse continues. Mm -hmm. You know, listen yeah. to your child. You know, that's my, my last message is listen to your child. Listen more. Yes. Sit and talk and listen and understand. And if you can't understand, then go to someone else who can understand, who, who can help you to understand. Because it's, exactly. it's not... This is not an option or an answer. Do not send your kid away to any of these places. Yeah, right. I, I don't. Yeah. Anyway, thank and you so much for talking. Thank you so much. For <laughs> no, it's been a pleasure. Love. Thank you so very much. And um, it's, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, it's been a pleasure talking to you too. And I love talking CCI. And I'm so glad that you're awake and that you know. You can always contact me, and I'm always your friend. Um, okay, and same here. And, and anybody that needs help, you know, um, reach out for someone, you know, that, that may be able yeah. to understand you. And that's that's really important for people to know that. Because sometimes so people vital. don't. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. you know, because that's why, you know, I'm stronger today because of survivors reaching out for me and grabbing me and telling me it's okay and giving me my confidence and, you know, that's, it's really important to have that. And, um, I tell people all the time, you can always call me, you know, and, and it's just, you know, yep. trying to help somebody else, you know, that's struggling along the way. Yep. So, yeah. So we're not here to beat each other up. We just, because, yeah, yeah but the, the thing is, 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 we didn't, we didn't go through this for nothing. Exactly. And, and I think in our heads, we want to justify that by, at least we can be an ear or an understanding, you know, human to someone yeah. else who's going through it. And, and you know, be and somebody really voice. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and be be the person that we didn't have. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah, because, um, you know, one thing I don't get is that 
um, you know, I, I noticed that a lot of these shows that, that were from the 80s, you know, like the Alon and Straits and all that, nobody was paying attention to this. I don't know where, where people were, why no. they weren't watching this, but, um, I know. yeah, so it, it, it's, it's, you know, if there's one place like this, there's always another, and every time one seems to close, the other one seems to open, and that's what we have to just make people aware of, but, yeah. you know, I'm, yeah. I'm always here for you, and thank you for, for, you know, having me on and, and reaching out for me, and and thank you for being my friend. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you, fellow survivor. I see you, survivor. Yeah, we, and we do try. We, you know, we yeah. can get through this, and that's what's important. So the result, you know, I, I don't want to see any more suicides. It's bad. You know? All right. And um, if you like this show, you can like and subscribe. And uh, we thank you very much for listening. Okay. Send me a link. Sure. And <laughs> I'll appreciate it. Thank you so very much, Lexi. You have a good day, okay? You too, friend. Bye. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye.